But I was thinking about the announcement that Ricky gave about the evangelistic meeting that's coming up, or revival meeting. A few years ago, I had the privilege of going to Tanzania and hold an evangelistic meeting. In our day off, there were a variety of things we could do. One of them was to walk among lions. A man owned a dozen lions, and they were not in cages. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to do that. I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to pay someone to take a chance of getting eaten by lions. Sometimes we see inviting our friends to a church event like walking among lions. But just know, if you don't invite your friends, you know they won't be here. So you really have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And it's more than probable that those lions are vegetarians. And so you have nothing to fear. So let's turn to Daniel 6. The story of Daniel and the lion's den is probably one of the most favorite stories told in the Bible, especially among children. The story of Daniel and the lion's den has encouraged God's people through the centuries. It is a story with all kinds of twists and turns. It is a story where the good guys win and the bad guys, well, they don't fare so well. And along the way, we discovered Daniel's secret. He believed in his God. He lived in a hostile environment. He lived in a secular environment. And as Christians, we live in a similar environment where people are very skeptical about the Word of God and about Christianity. We live in a world where there is a temptation to sacrifice or to compromise our biblical principles. Because the world doesn't want its heart pricked. It would rather settle for compromise. But what God needs is for us to be Daniels, to stand up and be true to Him and not to compromise. Amen. Daniel 6 gives us a preview of life in the last days where the issue is of worship and who we worship. The majority believe that the law of God is no longer binding. And most people are willing to make compromise that leads to false worship and that leads to creature worship. But in contrast, we see Daniel who is faithful, who yields not to the pressure of the majority or to the culture, or to the times, but remains steadfastly obedient because he believes his God. Now the events of chapter 6 occur when Daniel's about 85 years old. And there is a, a strong relationship between Daniel chapter 3 and Daniel chapter 6. Because you remember in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar attempted to impose false worship on God's people. In Daniel 6, Darius is trying to forbid true worship. Notice with me verse 3. It says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. That excellent spirit is a reminder to us that Daniel was guided by God's Holy Spirit. He was dependent on that spirit for all his decisions and for the way he lived his life. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we are just as powerless as Daniel was without his spirit. But with His Spirit, we have that right attitude, that right insight. Notice verse 4. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdoms, but they could not find, they could find no occasion, they could find no fault for as much as he was faithful. 
Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Daniel was faithful in the small things so that when the big test came, he knew how to trust in God. And it says that there was no fault in him. Really, a better translation is there was no corruption in Daniel. And he was serving in the king's court, but he was not corrupt. Daniel kept God's law. Daniel walked with his God, even at the risk of death. Notice verse 5. Then these men went, these men said, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdom and governors and princes the counselors and the captains had consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or any man for thirty days, save to the king of the king, O king, he shall be cast to the den of lions. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree, sign the writings, that it not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Darius had the similar issues that Nebuchadnezzar had when, in chapter 3, he built this large image of gold. And that was, he was fearful of internal corruption, internal revolts. If you remember in chapter 3, his kingdom was, un was under attack, even to the very palace, Nebuchadnezzar found himself fighting for his life. And so he demanded all his leaders submit. Darius finds himself in a similar situation. And these government workers who served at the will of Darius recognized that the, the life that Daniel lived, that there was nothing they could find wrong with him. And so they were looking for a problem with God, not with Daniel. They were looking for a problem with God's law that would be in conflict with, with the Persians. And so they came up with this decree. Remember it says that the Persian law cannot be changed. How ironic is that people said, but the law of God can be. Amen. How ironic. Daniel's enemies could find nothing wrong with Daniel. So they found a conflict between the law of the Medes and the Persians and the law of God. So for 30 days, nobody could pray except the Darius. Verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house with his windows being opened and his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to his God as he did aforetime. Daniel did not play games with God. He continued his customary devotional life. Three times a day, Daniel prayed, not with the windows closed, but the windows opened as he always had done. Notice verse 12. Then they came near and spake to the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, Rats. This is terrible. So the thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which all thrift not. Thus we have civil powers trying to legislate religion. Civil power trying to legislate one's relationship to God. It's important to realize that Darius was not David, was not Daniel's enemy. But he did become a menace to Daniel when he listened to the advice of his counselors. Verse 11, these men assembled and found Daniel praying, making supplication to his God. 
This story reveals the power of human rules. Human rulers is limited. When Darius gave this decree, he sought to establish himself as the Almighty. But once he signed that decree, he became the slave of his own law. And he was bound by his own decree that he could not deliver his friend Daniel. Verse 16, then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver you. He will deliver you. That word deliver is used several times in Daniel 6. It's used in Daniel chapter 3. And it's used one time in Daniel chapter 12. God will deliver us. I remember the, the three young Hebrews said, but even if he doesn't, doesn't spare our life, we will serve God. And Daniel was committed to serving God in chapter 6. Even though he knew he'd be thrown to the lions, even though he knew he could be killed, he chose to serve God. Darius overstepped his authority. He tried legislating the first four commandments of, of God's law. That's only God's dominion. Amen. Yes. Verse 17, And the stone was, was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Verse 18, Then the king went to his palace, passed a night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Darius was terrified. Because he knew that none of the Persian gods they worshipped could save anybody from the lions. Amen. He knew that. And he made that appeal to Daniel, I hope your God can save you. So unable to save Daniel, Darius cast his faith in Daniel's God as his only hope. And then the king acted on faith and fasted the whole night. You may wonder, you know, why, is, why did God let Daniel be thrown to that den? Why didn't he just spare him that trial? Well, Daniel had to face that death decree because he chose to worship the true God. And he would not yield on that taunt. Satan is putting God on trial here. Yeah. Who is the true God? The gods of the Persians? Or the God of Daniel? Daniel went through a severe test, test here. But he passed in the flying colors. Because God sent his angel there to take care of those lions. Verse 24, the king commanded, they brought those men who accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions. Their children, their wives, their lion, and the lions had mastered over them and break all their bones in pieces wherever they came to the bottom of the den. There was no angel there to protect these men, their wives, and their children. Verse 25, then Darius wrote unto all nations, languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall even unto shall be even to the end. That was nice of Darius, wasn't it? write a decree and say, you better worship the God of Israel. He still doesn't get it, does he? Yeah. You can't legislate. You can't
can't legislate worship. Amen. Worship is a hard issue. Amen. It is about our walk with Jesus. It's, it's much like the vision statement that the church has adopted. Walking in Christ through prayer, love, health, and sharing. Darius meant well. <laughs> but he totally got it wrong. Daniel was delivered because he had a covenant relationship with his God. Verse 22 says, My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouths of the lions that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Innocence was found in me and also before thee, O king. I have done no hurt. The king didn't rest all that night, but Daniel did. Because there was an angel there and he was controlling those lions. Sometimes you see pictures of Daniel and the lions and sleeping over the lions. Well, we don't know if he did that or not, but he had nothing to fear. He stood innocent before God, which was the most important thing. He stood innocent before God. And this picture in Revelation and Daniel 6 mirrors the picture in Revelation 14:5. In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Amen. That's what God wants to see of us. To be people who are not corrupt, but people who would rather trust God than themselves. People who are willing, even if necessary, to give their lives for God's cause. Daniel was found without fault before God. The and the, the king, just as in Revelation, the people of God are found faultless or without fault. Daniel, this, this chapter 6, prefigures God's people in the last times. Daniel represents God's people. Daniel and God's people are persecuted for choosing to obey God. The king of Persia and the beast power of Revelation make laws that require false worship. Both the decree of Darius and the mark of the beast lead to the worship of a man. The penalties for obeying God rather than man involve a death decree. Daniel was found without fault before God and the king of Revelation. The people of God are found blameless and without fault. God is faithful and miraculously protects his end time people. The wrath of the king gives the persecutors an unpleasant reward because the end of those who choose not to follow Christ in the end time will be destroyed. They will, they will cry out for the rocks to fall upon them. God's end time remnant will be filled like Daniel was with the Holy Spirit. And the end time remnant will be faithful in the duties of daily life. They will be honest, trustworthy, even in the small things. And they will stand firm when the test, the big test comes. And we're told to have money set aside for retirement, have our houses, our cars all paid for. But you know, when the end of time comes, the government will just take it all away. So it's important that we be faithful now. Amen. So that when the time of crisis comes, we're not caught off guard. Faithfulness to God's law will be the central, was the central issue for Daniel. It will be the central issue for God's end time people. The wicked will not be able to find fault in God's people in the end of time, just as they could not find fault with Daniel. There's another related issue in the final conflict, and that is worship. Our Constitution says, Congress shall make no laws 
neither respecting establishment of religion nor forbidding the free exercise thereof. But Revelation tells us that the end time, the beast's power will violate the Constitution. They will enforce Sunday laws, which will actually be anti-Sabbath laws. And the Sunday laws will eventually be placed upon God's people, and they will have to choose. Will I trust God, or will I compromise my faith? God's people in this crisis will have an unshakable and unbreakable faith, just as Daniel did, and just as Jesus does. The religious leaders of the United States in particular, and the world in general, will deceive the political rulers into thinking that the remnant, that God's people, are a threat to the welfare of the state. And they will persuade religion, they will persuade political leaders to proclaim religious laws, and they will legislate God's first table, God's law, as illegitimate. The servant of the Lord says, the wrath of man shall praise thee, says the psalmist, the, remain, the reminder of wrath thou shalt restrain. God means that testing truths will be brought to the front because a subject of examination and discussion, even if it is through contempt placed upon them. The minds of the people must be agitated. Every controversy, every reproach, every slander will be God's means of provoking inquiring and awaking the minds that otherwise would slumber. That's going to be great water. It may be terrifying. It may be confusing. But as long as we're anchored in God's Word and anchored in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we'll be able to see through the maze of confusion. Amen. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, when the wicked come against God's people, the Lord does not prevent them. He allows them to surround the city so that God's glorious deliverance of his people can be seen by the entire universe. Mm. God's people will come face to face with a death decree because they insist on worshiping the true God. And this will lead to a time of trouble. We know this brave man Daniel refused to back down. And God worked an amazing miracle. He sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth and he protected his servant. Maybe he tranquilized them. Maybe he assigned those lions to a 12 hour fast. Or maybe they just lost an appetite. Or maybe they became vegans. We don't know. We just know there was an angel there. Whatever happened, it was the powerful work of God that made the difference. The lions could not eat Daniel because he had too much backbone. <laughs> Are you facing lions today? Don't back down from the fiery trials because God is always on your side. As Paul said in Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Therefore, if Satan mimics the king of beasts, know that the king of kings will give you victory. And if he comes as a roaring lion, stand firm because we have the power of the Lion of Judah. Don't back down. God's grace will carry you through. As James said, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Whatever you're facing, Jesus is always the answer. And when there's confusion, Go to the Word, where God gives us clarity. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand strong for God. Let's pray.
Father in heaven, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this story of Daniel. And thank you for helping us to see the, the mirror between Daniel and your end time people. Help us, Lord, to be your end time people. For I pray in Christ's name. Closing him is on page 330. Take my life.